So Adam shot a nice big buck and we watched him take it from the basically from the field to uh, skin and quartered here at the skin and rack. So we're going to continue our skin and rack series. Uh, Justin Bone's going to show us kind of how his process for uh, caping the head and the areas that you need to look out for when you're uh, when you're caping a big buck like this. Okay, today we're going to uh, cape the uh, entire cape off of the skull of this buck. Uh, that way, uh, we can just roll this cape up, stick it in the freezer. It'll maintain. We don't have to rush to the taxidermist. We uh, we can just take our time with getting everything taken care of yet. The hide it still self still stays in good condition for the mount. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to take, I'm going to prop him up. I'm going to run a Y up the back of the head to each antler, and then we'll peel down and around. Now there's a couple places you want to be especially careful um, when you do this. One, you want to make sure you don't get too far up into the ears. You take all of the hide and hair around the antlers. You get the inside of the eyelids. You dig out the tear ducts. And you also have to be careful around the lips in those areas as well. well. I'll show you those points when we get to them and why it's important. Um, but for now, we'll go ahead and get started and we'll make our why. Head facing away, nose and antlers. The bigger deer tend to have a, a better frame to, uh, to set them up for me. And I'll make sure everything's out of the way, loose, where I can move with it. I don't have any skin pulling in any direction to, to offset me. I'd like to try to keep everything as straight and as clean as possible. So once I'm you know, set up, everything feels good, I'll go ahead and make my first cut. Right here that you can see on, on most whitetail that have a little darker line, that's what I will uh, would like to follow. I'll come, you know, just enough, all you need is enough to pull down around the skull. So I'll come just four or five inches down from the ears, and you always wanna cut from the inside of the skin out. So I'll poke through, follow that line up, to the top of the skull here. And from this point, I wanna come from here to this antler, then here to this antler. And you wanna to try to keep the knife as vertical as possible and remember to always cut from the inside of the skin outward. That saves you from cutting too, many, too much hair off. We'll go to this side. We have our Y cut from this point. I'll start pulling this around. Here is where the ear comes into play. I try to keep it as close to the skull as possible. That gives your taxidermist more room to work on. If you get too far into here, you'll start getting into the hole of the ear and it'll be too much of a pain to fix it. Another thing you can use, a screwdriver, uh, any tool you have laying around, sometimes big nails, this little uh, tire fixing kit, you can stuff down and use it to peel that skin right away from the antler for you. getting this ear. Again, there's a ear hole right here and I try to stay as close to the skull as possible. And then I want to do the same thing for both sides that I did for the top of the skull is instead of cutting the hide away from the antlers, I want to peel it to make sure I get all of the hide with the cape. Thank you. 
Now I want to stop before the eye because this is one of those important pieces that we want to make sure that we do correctly. So I'll try to go, once I get this antler clear, I want to work on getting this one clear so I can do both eyes at the same time. All right, for the eyes, you'll notice that the skin will fold inside of itself. It's very important that you get your taxidermist both the inside and the outside of the skin because he will then turn and flesh it out to make the mount look proper. So what I like to do is I'll get my finger, stick it in the eyelid and pull it away and work underneath the skin, underneath my finger to make sure I get all of the skin available. So again, I'll set him up to where he's comfortable. I have nothing working against me. Stick my finger in, peel the skin away. I'll make my cuts and continuously pull on the eyelid away to make sure we get all of the eyelid. You can see my finger right here. This little flap right here, you want to try your best to keep on and attach to the hide as well. So when I pull away, I want to make sure I try my best to stay behind that part. And then we are clear of the eye. Now immediately after the eye is this tear duct. You want to make sure you don't cut through that. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get the other side first and then we'll work on those tear ducts. We'll flip them over. and do this the exact same way, just on the opposite side. Okay, so here we are to the first tear duct. As you can see, the muscle and skin fall into a little divot in the skull. What I like to do is I'll cut up to it, being very careful I don't cut through any hide. I'll get a screwdriver, a nail, or whatever, and I'll dig it out. It's tough skin, so you don't have to be too careful, but you don't want to put a knife to it. And you can see the little divot in the skull here. We got it clear. We can then cut beyond, and there's the duck with no hole cut through. And we'll do that for the other side as well. Again, here's the, the duck. We'll use this nail. I prefer a flathead screwdriver, we just don't have one available at the moment. And dig it out, and there it is, dug out we can cut it away. Okay, my next part is we'll turn him on his back like this and we'll work on the nose and lips. The nose, I'll just roll back and I will cut straight back into the cartilage. Trying to maintain as much of the inside of the lip as you can. It's always better to give your taxidermist too much rather than too little. And once you get back to where the bone starts, you can then come inside and skin along the side of the uh, top jaw or skull, whatever you want to call it. You can cut through the cartilage. 
bone, and then you're good there. And then I'll do the same for the bottom jaw. I'll cut along the bottom part of the jaw, around. So I'll take this as deep into the mouth as is comfortable that I can fit and still fit the knife and still see. And then I'll flip them over and finish it out. Okay, I've got as far as I can go with sticking the knife in without making any mistakes here. So what I'll do is I'll flip him back over. <clears throat> and I'll start working my way down. And once I get to the bottom part of the jaw, I want to cut through the skin on the back side of the jaw to where it exposes the teeth. That gets you all the inside of the lips that you need to get. And you can stick your finger out here, pull it away, and just follow it around. There it is. Wow, that's cool. That's Here's the cape of the buck. All we'll have to do is roll it up, bag it, stick it in the freezer. Uh, you obviously want to keep them as dry and as clean as possible and as airtight as possible. And that way, uh, if your tax nervous is out of town on a long drive, you don't have to rush it to them. You can just uh, do it when you have a free weekend. All right, that was a really good demonstration there by Justin, and uh, man, he makes it look easy. Caping a trophy buck is one of those things that's just always been extremely intimidating for me. It's something that I've never attempted on my own. In fact, I'm a little bit intimidated just trying to cape out uh, down past the shoulder, and so typically I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and just skin it out as far as I feel comfortable and take the rest to my buddy Josh or the taxidermist and uh, let them finish it out. But um, after watching Justin do that, I think I can tackle it. Uh, I'm looking forward to shooting my next trophy buck, and uh, I think I'm going to give it a shot. In fact, I may not wait for a trophy buck. It may not even be a buck at all. Uh, I may practice on a doe or a hog or something else, just so I'm not getting my first learning experience on a, uh, on a true trophy. I hope you all found it as informative and educational as I did. And, uh, and once again, thanks, Justin, for, for demonstrating that. On our next one, Justin's going to come back, and he's going to show us uh, how to score a rack according to Boone and Crockett or Pope and Young scoring standards. And uh, that's a, another really informative video that we have uh, in the queue for you. Thank you all for joining me. And uh, as always, I encourage you to subscribe. Leave comments. Uh, that's one thing that I'd like to ask you to do is leave comments and let me know what you think about it. Good, bad, indifferent. I can handle it. I'm a big boy. If you've got suggestions or comments, uh, things that you would like to see, things that you think I could do different or that Justin or uh, Adam could have done differently on their, their demonstrations, uh, feel free to let me know on that. Come join us at the discussion forum over at texasbowhunter.com and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next TBH video journal here on YouTube.